I received a package from my friend Brittany Allen. She was on Project Runway. She was on season 18. We met at a Project Runway fashion show when I was in Austin, and her packaging is so cute, by the way. Look at this fabric she gave me. Out of these, I found this mustard yellow, this cheetah print. It's like abstract. It's interesting. It gave me such like Hunger Games capital vibes. So today, I'm going to make a capital inspired dress. Not Effie Trinket exactly, but like just the people of the capital. They're over the top, they're wild, and I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> The first step in the process, for me always, is to lay out where I want my seams. It kind of helps me visualize what the dress is going to look like and how I'm going to contour it to the body. I use a blue painter's tape to do so, but they also make a tape called seaming tape to do it. Now that I've laid out my roadmap using the seam tape, I can then start to drape on the dress form using cotton muslin. This is also why they call it draping. I like to start by creating some counter tension on the dress form to kind of pull the fabric taut, so I'll pin on both sides of my seam tape, and then I can start adding my darts or um, pleating, whatever it is that you'd like for your garment to do. This is your chance to really start like laying the foundation for it, because this is what will become your pattern. The muslin afterwards will be perfected on the table, and then you will have an actual pattern. So now it's your time to play, to get creative, to start moving the fabric around and really decide what you want it to look like. Don't have limitations here. This is where a lot of people get hung up. I like to just let myself kind of play and wander here. I also think it's kind of a fun challenge just to fit the body. Now that I've got my muslin pinned where I'd like for it to be, I can then start tracing over it. This is also why cotton muslin works so great is because you can actually see the seam tape underneath of it. Once we've traced over all of our seam lines, then we're going to lay this flat out on the table. And I find this to be the most interesting part of the process because you really get to see what your pattern pieces look like. And it's also just kind of interesting to see how they do fit on the body because you will see those kind of organic curves start to make their way through on the fabric. Once I've laid it flat out on the table, I've taken my ruler. I got this one from Joanne. It's by the Plitz brand. I use it to really just kind of contour out the edges, make all the lines really sharp, and make them all kind of have a really nice flow to them. And then I go through and add my seam allowance. I like to use a half an inch all the way around, and I kind of just use this grid to follow all the way through the pattern to make sure that I have the right seam allowance on every part of the pattern. I think a big misconception with sewing is that you have to use a certain seam allowance, and one of my favorite mentors from Project Runway, actually Michelle Lesniak, said at one point, why do you have to use any seam allowance? It's your pattern. You can make the seam allowance whatever you like. Although it is more convenient to use like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch, but I always found that to be interesting, and I kind of like liked the freedom of being able to do whatever I wanted. Now it's time to cut the pattern out, and then we can start working on cutting it out of the actual fabric. One thing to remember when cutting on your fabric is to establish your grain line. Do you want to cut on grain? Do you want to cut off the grain? Or do you want to cut on the bias? I'm choosing to cut on grain for this fabric because I don't need it to have any extra stretch. I don't want to distort the brocade. Brocade's kind of a tricky fabric, so I really want to make sure that it holds the shape because I'm contouring it so closely to the body. Also, I like to use my crystals as pattern weights. You can use regular pattern weights or you can use regular straight pins, but a fun trick to use while working with straight pins is to twist the straight pin as you insert it into the brocade so that the straight pin does not push any of the fibers out of line. Sometimes that can like disrupt the pattern. So when I'm inserting the straight pin into the fabric, I just like to give it a little twist to make sure that I'm not disrupting that. And now let's begin stitching our bodice together. I always start with the bust darts or any other darts that are on the pieces so that they're complete before you start stitching them together. I also like to sew my lining as I go as well because I think that it just helps me keep everything in the same place. If I have any corrections to make, I can make them on both pieces so that they match perfectly. But to do so, I'm going to switch over the threads on my machine because I'm using a black satin lining and I want to make sure that I use a black thread with that because I'm crazy. Um, no, I'm just very detail oriented and I also just think it brings an element of luxe in when you match your fabrics to your threads. And now I'm just going to stitch my lining fabric the same way that I stitched the outside fabric. Uh, that way I can make sure that everything is sewn the exact same and that if I've made any corrections as I go, because I do that, this is my pattern, not a store-bought pattern, so sometimes I have to kind of tweak things as I go to make sure they fit correctly. I want to make sure my lining is the exact same so that it fits really snug and beautiful to the body. 
The next step of the process is arguably the most important part of the process and also my favorite, and that is pressing your seams flat and beautiful. Uh, the main reason that I always stress this is because it makes your things look so professional. I mean, really, when you go to a store, look at the clothing that you're buying off of the rack. Usually, if it's a nice item, it's got beautiful flat seams, and, and maybe the, it's wrinkled or it needs steam. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual seam itself is pressed flat so that when you wear that on the body, it just holds you snug it lays beautiful it just is the most important thing that you can do with a garment and i cannot stress it enough that's why i say it in every video now that i've sewn all of the darts i can then start assembling the actual bodice and i'm going to start at the shoulder seams which i always do um, i will also be pressing this as i go even though you won't see it in between every scene because i don't think we want an hour-long video making this dress even though this dress took me like 15 hours to make Now that I've got my lining sewn at the shoulders as well as the outside shell of the dress, I can then begin stitching them together. I'm just going to pin all the way around the armholes and I'm going to turn them inside out because this is the easiest step of the process. One of the bigger things when I'm creating your pattern to think about is how am I going to assemble this? There's always a cause and effect when it comes to assembling a garment. One thing is going to connect to another so you have to kind of find that process that allows you to create the garment in a way that allows you to make as minimal mistakes and as little seam ripping as possible. And now let's stitch along those lines that we've pinned to create the armhole. Before we flip the garment inside out, because we've sewn along a curve, we are going to clip some of that curve. This allows us to alleviate some of that tension so that when it's flipped inside out, it can lay flat and beautiful, it's not going to have any bunching, and there's not going to be any weird tension. To flip it inside out, I'm just going to push one of these edges through the opening and then pull it right side out and it should be ready to go for us to press it flat and beautiful. When pressing an edge like this, especially one that's going to be a focal point of the garment, I really make sure that I get really close to it. I pinch it really nice and flat so that you only see half of the yellow and half of the black lining at the edge, and then press it as I go. I like to use a little steam. Watch out for your fingers because these irons will bite you with the steam, but it really makes a beautiful effect. It, it's like I said, the most important thing you can do to your garment is to press it. It really will elevate your garments to the next level. Now let's add the collar to the dress. This is going to be like what I think gives it that kind of like high prestigious capital from Hunger Games edge. Uh, and I'm just going to stitch that along the edge right here. I'm using my half inch seam allowance that I built into the pattern to do so. Now that we've stitched everything, I'm going to go over those edges with my overlocker or my serger machine. This machine will cut the raw edge and then overlap that new raw edge that's fresh with four different threads, four or five, depending on the serger that you're using. Um, a lot of people will do this to the actual pattern pieces before stitching the dress together, and sometimes I do do that. But because I don't want this to be multiple sizes, I'm just going to go ahead and lock those seams in where they're at. Um, I think it just gives a really nice, clean, beautiful edge, especially for someone that's purchasing it. But yeah, this is also the stitch that's inside of your jeans sometimes. Uh, different machines do different kinds of it as well. My skirt is going to have three different layers and the top layer is going to have these massive pleats that are going to be stitched down just an inch and a half and then I'm going to be pressing those pleats flat to the body so that they create this beautiful boxy pleat that stands out from the hip. I've dropped the waist super low on this so I think this is going to give this a very fun flirty effect. For the other two layers of the skirt, I'm going to be using a gold and a black organza. And I'm going to be gathering them, so I'm going to need to change the sewing foot on my machine. I love to use the shirring foot for these kind of things. I just kind of unscrew this and pop it on there, screw it back in. What this does is it gathers the fabric as you go. And as you can see, as I'm doing with this gold fabric, it is so incredible. It gathers every fabric a little differently, and it does give you a little bit of control with that. So you just kind of have to space it out in whatever way that you want. But yeah, it's such an easy tool, and it really simplifies how having to do that gather, stitch, and pull. Now that I have all my layers done, I've pinned them all together onto the skirt, and now we can start attaching that skirt to the actual garment. It's a lot of fabric right here, so I'm having to do it very cautiously, use a lot of pins, and actually I do sew over my pins in this section, simply because I think I need them to hold it together. I'd rather break a needle than lose my placement. 
After stitching the skirt to the bodice of the dress, I can now overlock that seam. This is going to get rid of so much of the bulk because this is so much fabric being held in by the seam, and it's also just going to reinforce it so it makes it super strong. Like I said, this seam is going to hit right around the hip of the dress for like a huge flare out, and that is a really, really mobile part of the body. So we want to make sure that this seam can hold any action that the body gives it. The last step is to attach the zipper and the lining. I won't lie to you, the zipper is my least favorite part. I find it super tricky. I've gotten really good at it, but it takes so much practice. So if an invisible zipper is something that you are struggling with, I definitely suggest making yourself do it because you will get better at it and it will, will get easier, I promise. I use this invisible zipper foot that I got from my industrial sewing machine and it makes a world of difference. For the reveal of this dress, I wanted to give you guys something special, so I drove out to the desert to reveal this dress. I just felt like it was such a fitting place to have it. It almost feels like a cheetah in the wild. The silhouette of this dress gives me major capital citizen vibes. I think it turned out so chic and so cute and it's different. It definitely pushes the limit of like what is the norm of a dress, and that's really my goal this year, is to stop making fashion that feels like contrived or that feels like I'm pleasing everyone else. I just want to make things that inspire me, and this dress was a really great way to start off my new year. One of my big goals of 2021 is to post more of my dresses on YouTube, so if you would like to follow along and see these full-length videos, please like and subscribe so you can take the journey with me.